Uh, make sure that you mention to one of the Michigan Safe Energy Future uh, people here today, before you leave, what topics you're interested about. We want to do more workshops like this, but we want them to be something the community is interested in learning about. So we will go out there and get a speaker to come in and uh, present some information for you, but we need to know what you're interested in learning about. So talk with me, talk with Sandy, talk with Mayor before you leave about that. So with that, let's move into, uh, we have just under a half hour of open discussion and conversation with uh, Maynard and Peter. Okay. Not mandatory. <laughs> so I heard, let's see, I, we just heard what uh, Maynard's recommendation was. That was a home uh, relying on uh, renewable energy and uh, also maybe an electric car in the future. And um, re remind me, your, your was to make sure that you're vocal in your community and with your government uh, about your stance on that climate change is, a, is like the pressing issue in our society. Yeah, and, and, and in terms of, you know, a lot of people still want to hear what can I do, you know, and, and for a lot of times when I'm in sort of, you know, obviously this is a group that's pretty focused on this issue, but if I'm in sort of a general audience group, I, I try to remind people that sometimes in our minds we set the bar really high, you know, like, uh, so I'd love to have a solar house, but it's just too expensive, I can't do it just now, or the laws aren't favorable, or we'll have to wait for this or that. And, you know, and, and I'd say, to them, you know, you may already be doing some really good stuff, you know, like, uh, did you shop at a farmer's market? You know, great. You're supporting local food. You're making yourself healthier. You're uh, probably supporting a local grower who is taking good care of the soil and, and uh, uh, less fossil fuel energy involved in the shipping of that food. So, wonderful. Have you bought a new appliance? Lately, well, it's probably a lot more efficient than that old appliance that you had. So, good for you. You know, you're you're doing your part. Uh, do you have Do you have a garden? You know, do you put manure on that garden? Well, why down you're sequestering carbon? You know, you look at you. You're you're ten years ahead of your time. So, uh, I I think we we uh, those of us that want to really advocate for these things can uh, sort of be imaginative and think about things that are already simple that a lot of people are already doing, they're already thinking about, and, and just kind of put it in a context, well, well look at that, you know, you're, you're making a difference, you know. Uh, if we look over the whole society, for instance, we're driving as a society fewer miles than we drove five or six or seven years ago. Uh, in part that's because uh, gas prices have gotten to a certain point and the price of cars has gotten to a certain point where it's sort of reached a kind of a max, maxing out uh, level for the society. Young kids, the millennials, uh, my kids, uh, they're not as enamored of the car culture as we were growing up. You know, we were listening to the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean and the little old lady from Pasadena and all that stuff. <laughs> And with them, it, you know, I think we're all adults, I can put this in raw terms, you know, uh, your chances of getting lucky uh, nowadays have less to do with your sweet ride than your sweet Facebook page, you know, <laughs> frankly. And uh, that's just the way it is. And more and more uh, people are living in urban areas where they have access to mass transit. So, so that's making a difference. Even Detroit. It just inaugurated a broke ground on a, a, a light rail system, which is going to be that's that's a game changer, you know. So yeah, we can all applaud that. There's another there's another one, which is that in our neighborhood, lots more people are walking, and that's because they are too poor to drive. Well, poverty comes into it because we have a stratified society that is. Uh, kind of creating a bit of a two-tiered uh, transportation system and, and simply locking people out of the auto culture. And so, so politically, we'll either, we'll either continue in that direction and, and uh, become 
uh, unstable as a society, or we, if we're politically active, we may we may turn that to our advantage and create a society that's that is inclusive. I have to ask a question of Peter here, if I may. Um, um, I've been impressed with the power, the institutional power of um, agro-industrial corporations, energy corporations, and I, 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 I always think, well, what, how can we beat that? And I think you give us the answer, but maybe you can explain a little more. Namely, the energy corporations are on the way out, like the land phone companies are on the way out because the technology has changed. So do you think that's what you meant to say? Or? Well, uh, I, I have a lot greater respect for the power of good technology than I did 30 years ago. You know, yeah. um, and I guess that's in large part because of my observation of how we've changed with the advent of the internet. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I live in a small town in the Midwest, and I and I have to say it's it is an utterly different experience now than it would have been than it was 25 years ago because i'm connected to the whole world i i conduct most of my business without moving anywhere from my basement so uh you know i'm generating uh, uh income and i'm generating uh economic activity with, with uh, just the flow of electrons and not necessarily my physical movement or anything else so and, and you know, for a thousand other reasons, you can look at that particular technology and how transformative it is. And so, solar technology and renewable energy technology, it, in my mind, and a lot of other people that are smarter than me, promises to be just as transformative and just as disruptive for those companies that uh, that are unwilling to change. And uh, we don't have to think very hard. Uh, about uh, companies that have have either gone away or come come had near death experiences mm -hmm. in the last uh, 20 30 years because mm -hmm. of changes in technology. In this area, the dealers in photovoltaics and wind are complaining because nobody's buying. Right. Nobody. Based on the distributed uh, household level. Yep. Well, the 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 issue is that we it, we in our state have not done what we need to do to make this transition attractive to people. In states where they've kind of greased the skids, that's where you see solar companies like Sungevity and Sun City. They're coming in and uh, uh, they're, they're putting solar systems on people's roofs for no money down because it, the business model makes sense for them in those states. Mm -hmm. Until we change the laws in this state, we're not going to see those acti activities because why should they come here? There's plenty of low-hanging fruit for them elsewhere. It almost seems like our legislature is going the opposite. Our legislature are troglodytes, so <laughs> if they're not going to... Uh, <coughs> You know, we really have to kind of grab them by the throat. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, this this uh, sort of jujitsu thing of energy freedom is going to be a successful one. So that's something that we should all be thumping the tub about, and making noise about, uh, and even maybe reaching out to people in our uh, in our circle or in our in, in our neighborhoods that are politically very different from us, but might be able to see eye to eye on that particular issue. This has happened in other parts of the country, like Georgia, where you have uh, something called the Green Tea Party. Uh, you know, which, and you saw the woman in, in the video, uh, she is the more or less the, the head of that movement, and she's been up here, uh, I think she was in Michigan, she's been in Wisconsin lately, kind of spreading that, that whole idea. So that's a, uh, that's a real powerful uh, kind of sticky idea that's that's out there, and it's taking root in places that maybe the energy companies thought that they had ideologically sort of locked down, mm -hmm. and maybe that's not the case. So we should think in terms of exploiting that when and where we can. Yeah. Um, you talked about um, this paradigm shift that's going to pull the rug out from under big energy, and I wonder if that paradigm shift 
if, if you see the possibility of pulling the rug out of big agriculture, that would allow um, this kind of shift to more sustainable uh, farming practices. You know, is that well, coming? Is that I don't. I don't. I don't think these companies are going to go away anytime soon. But uh, there is. Uh, just like there is a renewable energy movement that just has a, an inherent logic to it, an inherent economic uh, rationale to it, it's, it's, it's the laws, the invisible hand of the market is pushing it, you know. And likewise, uh, if you look at the growth of, of local food systems, the demand for local food, and, and it's across the board, Democrat, Republican, whatever, people like fresher food, local food, they like the idea of knowing where it comes from, and, it, and it, you can see it manifested in a hundred different ways. You know, people want GMO labeling. They want GMO labeling. They want their local craft beer. You know, they get excited about that. It, 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 there's, there's so many ways that this feeds into our, uh, kind of our uh, down-home human sensibilities that kind of everybody, you know, it crosses all the barriers. And I don't see that going away because uh, people continue to be successful in, in serving that demand. And so uh, that's, I, I, I think what that, what's going to happen is that's kind of growing in tandem with this, this big agriculture and big energy that we have. And it's gradually kind of eating away at it. But I don't see that we're going to have a complete sea change anytime real soon, but we may see some of those big companies evolve if we educate more people and kind of spread these ideas and and uh, kind of uh, continue to see the benefits of this. I mean, unfortunately, there's certain, there's certain segments of the population that are always going to want junk, junk food, just like people, a certain segment always is going to want uh, heroin, you know. Um, so, 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 you know, we, we have a system that's gonna that's gonna serve that. But I think we're we're seeing the the development of kind of a grassroots response to that that is gonna serve a lot of people. I have a gardening question. If you put rotten leaves on your garden, now you're gonna need to put lime with them to balance it out. Is that correct? Well, maybe if it help them deteriorate faster, but I don't know if it would save your your uh, nitrogen, which is needed for them to run. I'm talking about leaves that maybe have been laying in the uh, woods for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to like, put, put it on your garden next spring, mix lime with them? Is that what okay. you should do? Pika. Let me get there. Here we go. Okay. I, I am planting a lime because our dollars speak. And I went online and there was there was page after page of all these things that are being boycotted, but there's no, it's really not powerful because I, you know, who's ever even heard of this? Like, does anyone know anything that's being boycotted? Well, GMOs, but do you know what I'm saying? Nestle, I've been boycotting since I was breastfeeding my baby, you know? <laughs> I'd like, um, I'd like to, uh, just from the crowd, like to answer that. There's one thing that you can boycott very easily if you're a consumer's power or a DTE customer, and that's uh, fossil fuel and nuclear-powered uh, 
electricity. You can, uh, um, I just put that slide up. In three months, I went to 100% renewable energy in my home. Some of that's my solar panels. Some of that's my reduction of uh, energy. Uh, but the other part of that is I signed up, I pay an extra penny a kilowatt hour for my, to, to say my, you know, it's in its, legislated by the you know, Michigan Public Service Commission. They, they audit the books. Uh, so I buy, and you can do the same thing for two cents a kilowatt hour from DTE. And that strong, sends a strong message. I went to the Michigan Energy Fair this summer and I found the highest officials I could at the Michigan Public Service Commission. I wanted to find out what they're doing about regulating our industries and what they're doing and who I should be talking to about getting change in our energy portfolio. And you know what their answer was? Their answer was kind of like the NRC does, well, we don't make the laws, we just enforce them. But the second part of that was, they said, you know what? The reason the power companies make the power the way they do is because customers buy it, and they buy based on price. If you want your energy made with different sources, call your energy company and ask them to provide energy that was produced with different sources. And they said, it, it's effective. They listen to you. They, you know, we think that they don't, but if you are vocal, we want our power from renewable sources, the power companies listen because you know, we send them money every month. So make sure you tell them, and you can boycott uh, dirty energy as simply as going on the website and making a change. Good idea. A uh, couple of pieces of good news that I'll throw in there is uh, just as we're driving less, uh, or at least burning uh, uh, or running fewer miles in our cars, uh, we're using less electricity in our houses. This has been the case. Uh, for the last uh, four or five years. It has been flattening out, and even though you'll hear people say, oh my God, we've got all these gadgets, and we've got this, and we've got that, uh, I think it's actually kind of good news, and kind of interesting news, that we do have a lot of cool gadgets, but we're actually, by household, uh, either, either flattening out or going down. In fact, that's a big problem for utilities across the country, because Many of them are in a position where they they have to decide expenditures they're going to make uh, that will carry over for the next 30 to 40 years. And if they build a new power plant, almost any kind of new power plant, uh, is going to require them to raise their electric rates. Mm -hmm. That's that's. I had this conversation with a consumer's power executive a few years ago uh, when they were planning to build a big coal plant up in Bay City. And I said, look, I only had Econ 101, but help me out with this. If, if you build this new coal plant, you and the DTE fought really hard in the legislature to get this provision in the law that says you can charge construction work in progress. You can charge for the electricity before the plant is even built. Okay, so that's a given. If they build a new power plant, no matter what it is, they've got to raise the price of electricity. Now, help me out with this because my economics book said if you raise the price of something that the demand is already soft or declining, what is going to happen to that demand? You're going to put yourself into a death spiral where you raise the price, demand goes down, you try to raise the price again to make up for the lost revenue and you, and it just continues to go down because users, even household users, but especially big industrial users, have so many options mm. for using less energy or more and more generating their own. And there was a recent survey by one of the big accounting firms that said, mm -hmm. that took a survey of uh, companies with evaluations larger than a billion dollars and the majority of them said, more than 50% of them said, yes, we're looking at self-generating our own power sometime in the near or foreseeable future. So, um, we're, the, the, the utilities are in a very, very uh, precarious position. Uh, uh, I interviewed uh, S. David Freeman just two weeks ago, last week. Uh, S. David Freeman is 89 years old. He has been uh, a chairman of 
the, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the New York Public Power Authority, the San Diego Municipal Power Authority. The guy knows more about energy and utilities. He's forgotten more than I will ever know. Uh, he is sharp, 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 totally gets climate change, totally gets where we are, and he says the utilities don't know it, but they are on death row. If, if they don't uh, make a change, if they don't get with this transition, they're simply going to go away. And isn't it true that if people like uh, our chairman here reduce their demand from the utility, they're losing money on you? Of course. Yes. That's the chart of this year. It, it was my affiliation with Michigan Safe Energy Future, and, and I was looking for what can I recommend to other people uh, that got me to make some serious changes at our home in, uh, in the December and January. And so this is this year, or this year compared to last year. And so the changes that I've made have reduced my electricity bill by 37%. And uh, you know my my consumption is down that amount, and uh, so you know I I'm 100% renewable, and I'm paying less yeah. for, for my electricity. Exactly. So it's a win-win. And another area that gets very little discussion, which is the whole turf industry, and you know I've decided since I have this we live in town that I would grow what I call an American Heritage lawn which means no fertilizers and no herbicides. <coughs> and then I have a relatively small yard, so I use a real push mower. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but when you think about the huge amount that in cities and in golf courses, and in, it's, it's a huge energy empire that um, is typically not examined by anybody. The only one that most people are aware of is the pollution from all the, uh, the gas mowers. Yeah. But, um, the American lawn, it's a problem. And the leaf I, I'm going to have to take off because it's a three and a half hour drive home. I want to, I don't want to hit a deer and uh, the sun goes down about 7.30 so I want to thank you all for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.